my name is Alex and welcome to TechFlow. More specifically, part two of building, well, this house's network. We're doing a full-on Wi-Fi install, CCTV, rack, server cabinet, you name it, in this series. This is episode two. In episode one, we built the network. It was absolutely awesome. And we've also got a point-to-point -point link going down to the end of the house. But for episode two, we need to be, well, up in the loft. So honestly, I really recommend you go and watch part one before watching this. You done that? Right, okay, let's carry on. So, the main gist of this entire series was, well, I wanted to redo the network because I wanted to get all of this house's network stuff out of my big server cabinet over here. And this is my server cabinet where I sell internet to everybody. So I wanted to get rid of all the house's stuff out of here, put it somewhere else. Now, I said I was gonna put it in another server cabinet, essentially in the loft. You guys went crazy in the comments. Alex, you can't put it in the loft because it's going to overheat. Da -da 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 -da. So, well, we're going to put it somewhere else, essentially. And that somewhere else is a cupboard in the house. Um, let's go take a look at that. But first, this is all of the equipment that we configured back in episode one. So we need to, well, go ahead and disconnect all of this and take it down to the new cupboard space where it's actually going to sit. And hopefully you guys aren't going to be too mardy with me about the location. It's not in the loft, it's in a cupboard that's not in a loft. So it should be nice and cool. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the gear. This is where the server cabinet is, down here. I've already bought all the stuff, guys, and pre-planned loads of stuff for this episode, and we're gonna talk about that right now, so buckle up. Yes, our server cabinet is here. I've already pre-installed the PDU, or the power delivery unit, or however you wanna say it. And then this stuff is all rack-mountable, so it can go inside of our rack. I bought some shelves as well, so we can put other things inside the rack, like, you know, somewhere for this thing to sit. And I've already gone ahead and ran a load of these Ethernet cables, or Ethernet cables, however you want to say it, around to different locations to the house um, for a couple of wireless access points we need to install and for the cameras that we need to install in today's video. So, this is gonna be super, super fun and I've already done all the boring stuff. <laughs> Now this is obviously a big series. We're gonna be installing loads of access points and loads of different cameras, but essentially it, when you're installing these sorts of things, it's rinse and repeat. So I'm gonna do one of each thing with you guys. So in this video, we're gonna install a couple of cameras or one camera and one or two access points. In fact, I think we're gonna install two different types of access point, but first, more on this rack or why you would have one. So this magical thing right here is called a patch panel and I have really mixed feelings about these things, the use of them. I think if you're networking up a rather large building that has more than 16 ports, it's worth it. But if you're doing a home network install, to me, one of these is overkill, but I'm just doing it anyway, just because I like to do things to the T. Essentially what this thing does is it lets you punch down Ethernet or Ethernet cables to the back of it and then gives you an Ethernet port as to which then you can label these and these can then go up to your switch. That is all this thing does. And I've put in loads of cables that's gonna go off to loads of other places around the house. Now I've drawn up a schematic on my laptop as to where all the ports are gonna go corresponding to all of these different numbers. Port number 14 is actually the WAN to this house. So it's how this house actually gets internet. The other side of this port here goes up to my rack, which is how I'm feeding this house internet through my WISP. So number seven on my schematic goes to bedroom one access point. So if I find number seven on my patch panel here, which is there, and we plug in an ethernet cable and then plug the other end of that up into our switch. Now we can go and install, well, an access point the other side of this cable. But where does that cable go? Well, let's go find out. So welcome to my old bedroom, not much of a bedroom anymore. Let's install an access point. Okay, so on the wall here is an old school keystone jack. There's two Ethernet ports here. Uh, like I tell you guys, I am completely gutting this house, so um, I need to run a new Ethernet cable down here 
the one that runs to the to the rack, it's in the loft now, so it's gonna. I'll tell you what, if I tape it to these two cables, can we then pull it down? Yeah. I'll go up into the loft. Pull you down. Got it. Nice. Yeah, that'll do it. So now essentially what I need to go ahead and do is throw a termination on the end of this ethernet cable. Now this is an ethernet termination. Now Alex, why are you terminating it? Um, essentially this is our access point. This is the Unify AC in-wall access point and it takes power and data via PoE in the back there and it's designed to fit over something like this because then it also gives you a couple more ethernet ports at the bottom and this one can have poe out so then you could plug like a camera into this one too this thing is absolutely awesome and it's so 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 small please work <sighs> <laughs> it works okay it works so now this can get mounted onto here Wow, okay, this is awesome. This is really nice when this stuff works. Ethernet cable or ethernet cable is sometimes really hard to work with, patch panel end and this end, but this time it's worked a treat. Okay, so those access points, the in walls are actually my favorite for a sort of residential like house, if you're doing a house install, those in walls, brilliant. They're super inexpensive and like the footprint of them is tiny. They're access points that also have ethernet ports in them. So if you are running an ethernet port up to your child's room, for example, it can give out Wi-Fi as well as, well, have two ports. I think it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So this black cable here is going down into our patch panel, into our white cable, which is going up into the loft and out to our in-wall access point. We've got a green light there, which means we've got a link of a gigabit speed to our access point. That is fine. I fancy installing a camera now. So port number 19 is one of the camera cables that I've ran. Okay, so port number 19, I've plugged it into the switch. It goes to a cable over at this corner that I've ran along here. What I need to do is drill outside, essentially, put that cable outside, and then go and install one of the cameras to that cable. Ah, yeah, and here is one of our cameras that we installed in episode one. This is actually gonna be the camera that we're gonna be using outside. <laughs> So the thing I essentially love about this ubiquity stuff is it is all plug and play. So as you can see, much like the access point, we've got one of our security cameras here that we configured in episode one. Ethernet port, ethernet port on the back. Uh, what I need to do is go up that ladder, crimp the end of that ethernet cable so it can then plug into here and then install this mounting bracket on the wall and then essentially our camera is done. That is how simple this stuff is. I talk about this with enthusiasm, not because this is sponsored and stuff, because I genuinely like the product. Get that in your head. like. I know YouTube's a funny place right now with sponsorships and stuff and what you're being told is a lie, but this stuff, I mean it, coming from me, this stuff is awesome. So camera here, I've crimped the end, that should plug straight into there, and now essentially all we do is twist the camera onto the bracket on the wall. So guys, as you can see, this is our camera. Now it's super, super blurry at the moment. You're probably thinking that's absolutely awful. Well, that's because with these cameras, you have to go in and set focus. So they actually have an optical zoom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and set focus literally right in the center, which is my car. And that will now mean that that point there will be where the camera grabs focus. And now you can see it's pin sharp. That's wicked. So much like I said earlier, it's gonna be a case of rinse and repeat. This property isn't just going to have one camera. If you guys watched episode one, which you should have, you'll have seen that we're actually gonna be installing cameras on the outhouse of this house with a point to point link. But on this house, I just need to run more cables up into the loft, install more cameras so we can have more security. Same with the access points, however, 
I'm gonna show you guys us installing a couple more access points. Okay, so this, like the access point we've just installed, the in-wall is the in-wall HD. So this one is the, well, souped up version. It's got a few things like MIMO in it, it's Wave 2. Essentially, it's gonna be going in the kitchen and this is where a lot of the Wi-Fi traffic is soaked up in this house. So a nice thick HD access point with all of these little gizmos and gadgets and four ports on the bottom to connect hardwired devices. This is gonna be awesome. Now the reason this is going to be so awesome is because essentially there's a Sonos player here which, well, as you can see the owners of this house have had an Ethernet port put in the wall. So what I'm going to do here is install the in-wall HD and then we still have some Ethernet ports to go out to the Sonos player. Like this is just, I love how it all ties together now. So for those of you that may be asking or are actually into this sort of thing, I use the B schematic for wiring. So white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. That is the one that I use. <laughs> there we go, in goes the crimping tool, crimp it down. So actually, funnily enough, it is worthwhile to mention whilst I'm unboxing this access point, as you guys can see, the stuff inside the box and the way it's presented is just like A star. So the designer for all the well, all the design of the Ubiquiti products is actually somebody that used to work at Apple. That is a known, that is a known fact. So that is why all of the even boxes just look nice stuff. Okay, so essentially back to the laptop. I need to look at my schematic again, my wiring diagram, which I have no idea where it is. Here it is. So. Kitchen shelf, in-wall HD, is going to be port number three. Okay, so port number three down here should then plug into our switch. Boom, straight on, straight on. So now, as well as providing full-on Wi-Fi access to this part of the house and the kitchen, it's also providing wired Ethernet to our Sonos player. And I've got another Ethernet cable here as to which I'm going to plug into the first port on this InWall Pro, and I'll explain why in just a second. Now, this is one of the cheapest cameras Ubiquiti offers. It's called the G3 Flex. Again, powered by power over Ethernet. Now, this is one that we configured back in episode one. Now, the reason I plugged that Ethernet cable into, well, port number one of the in-wall access point is because port number one provides PoE out of it. So now, hopefully, this camera, as well as our Sonos unit up there, can now both receive power and internet access. Right, okay, so we are now in the lounge. I just want to test to make sure the Wi-Fi is working in a couple of locations. This is right below my old bedroom, so the first in-wall access point that we installed. That's what my phone should be connected to. I've got full signal. I'm going to open up the speed test app here, click go, and see what we get live in front of you guys. Seven ping, and there we go. I don't need to say much more, do I? So as you guys can see, one cable down from our main rack is giving the kitchen Wi-Fi with the in-wall access point. It's giving our Sonos Ethernet access. And it's also powering a CCTV camera, which as you guys can see, the quality is pretty darn fine. So it's been a crazy day so far and we're going to have to wrap up this video. We've literally been at it all day. My hands have been black about five times. I've had to wash them. The sun is currently setting. We've installed cameras. We've installed, well, a rack. We've put a patch panel in there and put in some of the equipment that we installed or set up in episode one. Now all we need to do is make it nice, essentially. So our patch panel that's there, we need to drill it into the rack and put everything in there like the cloud key. There's a few other things that need to go in there, like a couple of sky boxes, some Sonos players. But once it's all done, it should be absolutely awesome. We've also got a couple more cables to run for our point-to-point -point link down at the end of the garden. But so far, so good. Security and Wi-Fi, we've got this. So in that note, guys, I will see you in part three. On that note. Ready? Yep. So on that note, guys, I will close out this video here and see you all in part three. It's been a pleasure. Adios. <laughs> Yeah.